Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. Here in studio with me is the captain of the Lameda Sheriff Station, Captain Dan Berger. Always great to have you to give us your quarterly update. We do this once every four, four times a year. Four times a year. Yeah. And, and then some. We appreciate all you do for the community, but of course, we just want to share with the community the latest of what is happening with the latest in crime stats here in RPV and in the peninsula, on the peninsula. Sure, Liz. Great to be here. All right. So give us a little update. Is crime up or down? Uh, with the quarterly stats, it was about the same as the year before. Um, one thing to note, we had the same amount of residential burglaries during the quarter, 28 um, for the city. However, 11 of those burglaries occurred on one weekend at a condominium complex that was uh, under fumigation. So it really would have been better. Their numbers really would have been better had it not been for that one incident. So you had, you said one location. Can you share what happened in that particular incident so that maybe there's some teaching moments out there for other of our residents watching? Well, as you know, the residents are required to vacate while the, while the uh, buildings are being tented. Um, security is a good idea. They did have on-site security. However, sometime during that weekend while everyone was gone, uh, 11 units were broken into and there was some property loss. And, you know, we were talking, because I was just saying earlier before the show started, if if I had my house fumigated, I, I probably wouldn't have thought to take in all my valuables up. But you say you absolutely want to do that. You want to take cash, jewelry, silver, you know, any any small valuables uh, out of the home. And, and the city has a great program. They have a vacation uh, loaner program for cameras. And they will put a ring camera or lo loan the resident a ring camera to put inside your house, which is motion activated. And if there was movement, it would act uh, notify the owner via cell phone. And those cameras have been super effective, right? I know the ring program, the city and the sheriff's department, you teamed up so that the city actually got incentive programs, discounts. They're not that expensive to install, but they can make a huge difference in helping you catch whoever is... They're a great investigative tool. Um, burglarizing a home. Excellent. Are you seeing any particular trends, though, on, with crime on the peninsula right now? Well, unfortunately, as I've, as I've mentioned many times in the mm -hmm. past, we are still seeing thefts from vehicles, so I just encourage residents not to leave any valuables in your car, especially if you go to a park or the gym or go hiking. You don't want to leave any valuables in your car, especially in plain view. It's all the, the obvious thing. But in general, how safe are we? I know everybody's been more concerned than ever, I think, about the safety here in the peninsula. We had our guard down for years. Um, but if you to put it in perspective, are we still considered one of the safest places to live in the state? The peninsula is a very safe place. Um, you got to keep an inspector, and you got to you have to secure your valuables in your home. So, um, one thing that the sheriff's department and you offer at Lameda Station um, to help keep the community safe is home safety audits. And what is that all about? And how does that program work? We will have one of our deputies or sergeant come out and uh, audit the. Uh, the security features of every of each home that request it and make recommendations and we're doing that on an ongoing basis and so if what, anyone's, um, anyone's okay. interested you can contact Sergeant Doug, Sh Doug Shive at 310-891-3227. So how do you, like what are they looking for? Uh, you know, bushes blocking windows, lighting, you know, the things around the home, security cameras, that type of thing. Right, to make sure you have those kinds of things and make sure when they show up that your doors are locked. That's, that's correct. <laughs> that's the starters, right? Those, we gotta be vigilant and take care of our communities and um, we always have that saying, if you see something, say something. And if you do leave your car parked on the street, it's always a good idea to take that garage door opener out of the car at night because that's an easy way to access your garage. We started off the show with talking about where the crime stats are right now in the community, but how about in terms of um, crime prevention, your success stories with the Sheriff's Department in terms of solving crimes? Uh, we've really worked with the city well um, since my ten tenure started in Rancho Palos Fruities. The, the city council has been very supportive and the staff has been great with these programs for crime prevention. And uh, we're paying off dividends. We're seeing the, the crime rate and property crimes uh, actually decrease. Mm -hmm. Well, again, thank you for being on it. Of course, the crime that shocked the entire peninsula was um, the unfortunate murder that took place of an RPV resident, Susan Leeds, uh, back in May during the middle of the day at the promenade of the peninsula parking garage. And just if you could update the community, um, the status of the investigation, which is, is still an unsolved case. Yes, homicide investigators are still working diligently on it. They're moving. They, they, I talked to the lieutenant last week. He said they're moving in a positive direction forward, and uh, they anticipate it will be solved. 
And in terms of when that all went down, I mean, everybody was so scared to even go back to the mall and all of that. So what kind of steps do you think that, that has been taken in the community by your department to ease community fears, as well as like extra security maybe at the mall? Can you share anything about that? Uh, yeah, the mall's worked with us. Uh, they've opened a, uh, a sheriff safety center that uh, we staff with volunteers and deputies can go in there and write uh, reports and just provide more visibility for the mall. Uh, they designated parking spaces for the sheriff cars. So we hope to have our deputies more visible and present in that mall. And, and I've walked around myself and, and the residents seem very thankful that we're there. And, and another way that you're trying to help educate the community is on Thursday, which is September 20th, um, there's going to be what's called a situational awareness seminar that is being co-sponsored by your department and all the cities on the peninsula are participating. It's at the Norris Pavilion, um, and there's several sessions. Um, talk about how that event is called um, to, to help improve public, um, to learn about your own safety. Yeah, would they hired a uh, very dynamic speaker, Eric Franco. He's done other uh, seminars in the city. And there will be two sessions, one at 4 p.m. and a second at 6.30 p.m. So do you need to sign up? Uh, no. It's, it's, it's open to the public. It's open to the public. And it's called a Situational Awareness Seminar. So what kinds of things might you address? Uh, it's, it's probably going to be personal safety and being aware of your surroundings. And I know you mentioned that the, um, the presenter... Um, who was part of the Sheriff's Department's reserves. I saw him do a, a seminar with the Peninsula Seniors that was phenomenal, um, more about um, how to react in the event of terrorism and all of that. And I have to say that after being educated by him, any place I am in public, I always look for an exit now. I mean, it's changed how I think. He does a great job, and I hope, uh, I, I really think the community is going to benefit from, from attending. I mean, for all your years in law enforcement, in terms of um, your own personal safety, again, what are just the basic things you think residents need to do just to be, to, you know, to make sure that they're being vigilant? Um, always be aware of your surroundings and report any suspicious activity to us right away. Anything feels that doesn't feel right is probably not right, and give us a call. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break here with Captain Dan Berger. Thanks for being here in the studio. We'll be right back here on RPV City Talk. Stay with us. Making is, in essence, telling a story. Every time I make something, I'm telling a story. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. So if there's something that interests you, go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. I want to know why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Get out your phone right now and save this number. It's the Lomita Sheriff Station. That's your local police. 310-539-1661. They want to help, and you know what? This is your chance to make sure you have their number. That's 310-539-1661. Your local sheriff station wants to keep you safe, and they want to hear from you. They want to know if there's a strange car in front of your house. They want to know if you're worried about a solicitor that came by knocking on your door and you had a funny feeling about them. There's nothing wrong with having the sheriff come by and check your house, whether you're home or not. That's why they're here, to help. The Lomita Sheriff Station wants to know when you're out of town because they know that the burglars want to know. Help your local sheriff station be one step ahead of the burglars. Let the police know first when you're not home and they'll keep an eye on the place for you. It doesn't hurt and it's free. Take out your phone right now. You're probably on it right now Googling something or reading someone's post about their kid watching a silly cat video. So take less than a minute and pop this number on your phone. 310-539-1661. It's your local sheriff station and they don't mind swinging by. If you have a funny feeling about something, call them. They want to hear from you and they want to keep you safe. Here you go, last chance. 310-539-1661. 310-539-1661. Welcome back to RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson here with Lomita Sheriff Station Captain Dan Berenger. Again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to help the residents. You know, it's all about public safety. You meet um, quarterly with the Peninsula Contract Cities that you work with, the Regional Law Enforcement Committee, and you meet in Rolling Hills, and it's open to the public. Was it the second Tuesday each quarter? 
The or Thursday. 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 Second Thursday so of each quarter. You met in August. You'll meet again in November. So if residents are interested in attending, the next one's in November. Um, but the last one, what you kind of discussed some of the, the stats that we discussed. So what were some of the issues that you address when you meet with all the local elected leaders? Well, we, we address the quarterly crime stats for each city, as well as uh, traffic enforcement, number of car accidents, our enforcement index as well. So was there anything in particular that came up at your last meeting that was um, uh, we paramount? Did. We, we did an update on, uh, at the request of Mayor Brooks in May, uh, we, a subcommittee was formed with all four Peninsula cities, uh, including the mayor from each city, the city manager, and the p chief of police from Palos Verdes Estates and myself uh, regarding the way information flows when an emergency occurs and protocols in place. So the subcommittee has been working hard and reporting back on that. Well, it's always important to have the communications chain organized and figured out. And I know part of that was in the wake of what happened with the murder case back in May in terms of how the information went, went out. Correct. So what is the chain of command? When something happens, a crime um, that you need to report to the city leaders, how does that happen? Well, if the crime occurs in the, it, the city that the crime occurs in, that city is going to have the lead and work with me, and it could be the school district as well on getting that information out. Okay, well, that, that, was, that was a lot to accomplish. Any, any mm -hmm. objectives for your upcoming next meeting in November? That they, any other tasks they put you on? <laughs> Uh, not yet. We, yeah. We're going to report back to some of the other cities about the success of RPV's Ring uh, camera program. Okay. It's back to school time, and the kids are back in, and obviously things are busier with the hustle and bustle of back to school. And I'm just wondering for your team how you work with the schools, um, the sheriff's department, as well as you know, with the students. Well, a number of ways. One is traffic. Uh, traffic around the schools is always a concern in the morning and the afternoon during drop-off pickup times. We do have extra enforcement out there, so I'd like to remind all the parents uh, to obey the laws and be careful around. There's children on the sidewalk, and you never know when they're going to dart out in front of a car, so you have to be very vigilant when, when dropping off and be patient. Right. Do you actually do any kind of education, though, at the campus with the kids, just about... All kinds of issues. We do have core deputies who make their rounds and uh, visit the schools with the kids. Uh, in August, the school district hosted, co-sponsored with us an active shooter training for the entire okay. staff of the Palos Verdes Unified uh, Peninsula Unified School District. It was about 1,350 employees went through that. Fabulous. I know when my own kids went through the school district, you know, there was every now and then, you know, your school was in lockdown. And these kids, unfortunately, ha well, they have to be ready. They fortunately need to learn how to be ready, but it's scary. Unfortunately, yes. So, oh, well, glad that you are on that. Um, Rancho Palos Verdes uh, has, for some time, the current council has been very proactive in building the resources for your department, um, spending extra money when needed for extra patrols, extra cars. Um, the uh, talk about the just the, the beefed up security, how that's worked well it's increased our response time and the the community feedback has been great uh, well we've you know focus enforcement on the switchbacks on certain traffic issues and on pv drive south and it's been very positive as well as the preserved right. deputies your deputies are in the preserve and what are they out there looking for they're out there looking for uh, anyone breaking any of the rules of the preserve um including after hours i know this weekend they were very late into the night um, patrolling the preserve for for people who were in the preserve unlawfully after darkness. Okay, well, um, I know because I live right by Ladera Linda, you just don't know what's gonna happen up there. Good. Um, the other thing I was gonna ask you about is the ALPR cameras. We've mentioned them before. Um, that program that's taken place in the city and peninsula wide, I don't know how many are now installed. Are they all installed? They're not. Um, There's moving into the next phase to um, install cameras in the East View area, and uh, the city staff is working diligently on that and on placement and infrastructure for those cameras. And of course, what those cameras are doing, they're reading license plates. Correct. And, and how does this information help you? Well, we've located over 100 stolen vehicles since it's been implemented and made. Uh, numerous arrests and, and we also use it as an investigative tool when a crime occurs. So it literally is stopping criminals in their tracks. Absolutely. So it's been effective. Um, how can our community help you more do your job? How, how can we help law enforcement? 
as I stated earlier, it's just if you see something, say something, give us a call. If something looks out of place in your neighborhood or your business, if someone's acting suspiciously, call us right away. And I know you've been in law enforcement a long time. In, in Lameda, you were, were here earlier in your career, and you've worked in different communities. If you were to kind of grade the peninsula, I mean, this is a very active community. Do you find that, that with all the neighborhood watch groups that we are doing a lot to help very, you? It's a very active community, and, and there's a lot of citizen participation. Just watch a council meeting, how many residents show up and and uh, be involved, they're involved with it, and it's great. And of course, you're very involved in the community. We just had our city's 45th anniversary celebrations, and you were there representing, of course, <laughs> and uh, referencing the fact that when this city incorporated 45 years ago, the uh, Lameda Sheriff Station wasn't even built. No, it opened in 1975. <laughs> and you were still in elementary school. <laughs> yes. We were talking about that. Um, but on that subject, how are you doing at the station in terms of your staff? Or do you, I mean, we, I know that the, there's a lot of recruiting going on within the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. The department is still hiring sworn personnel uh, for deputy sheriff positions. We have about 600 openings still that they'd like to fill. And it's a very aggressive uh, marketing and, and hiring campaign. So if anyone is interested in a career in law enforcement, uh, the Sheriff's Department is a great place to uh, embark on that and you can just go to the sheriff's department website at careers.lasd.org okay um i'm looking to the rest of this year any big challenges you're seeing for you as captain and um, keeping us safe here on the peninsula well as, as we talked about school did start and the focus is going to be on traffic enforcement around the schools and and uh, keeping traffic moving we have a lot of construction going on on the peninsula right now and it's always an issue yes um and as we kind of wrap it up here, I always like to ask you sort of uh, if you have any special announcements or want to share really what you're enjoying most about this job as the leader of the team. Oh, it's I, <laughs> I feel blessed. I have a great team that works for me at the station as well as uh, the city staffs from all the cities and the city councils. Uh, I feel blessed. It's very, very, uh, we work it very well. Is there anything else you want to add just to remind the community what, again, how it Again, if you see anything suspicious uh, or out of place, please call the station and we'll send a deputy to check it out. And also you can check it all out on their Facebook page. You've got an active Facebook page and um, they can go and uh, find out all, that, all that's happening. Thank you, Captain Dan Berenger. It's great to have you in our studio. We'll see you back in a few months. All right. All right. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching. See you next time.